What's going on, everybody? Welcome to On Screen Live. I'm Andrew Jupin, and this is our show for Monday, the 11th of March, or Smarch, if you will. Uh, Going to bring in some buds here because we got a lot to talk about today. Of course, Hollywood's biggest night, uh, reviewing a movie in limited release right now. A lot to get to, so let's bring in all the buds here. First up, you know him, you love him, and I'm so thrilled that I received a text over the weekend that said he was indeed dune-pilled. Steve Sadak. Loved it. Oh, Dune 2. Yeah. Oh, living and loving for Dune 2. Uh, yeah, it's it's great. Uh, we'll talk about I, I, I might share a thought or two when we get to that point at the uh, box office game. Yeah, so, I like that, dude. Uh, what's mm-hmm. that shirt going on there? This is a, a, a rare, uh, one of my classic going on eBay for stuff. This is an X, <laughs> a weird time in the X Force when nobody was reading it. So they brought in two, my favorite artist, Mike Allred, and this guy, uh, Pete. Oh, God, I'll, it's going to kill me not to know his name. Uh, indie artists to make uh-huh. uh, X Force more indie. And it was super cool. And I really enjoyed that run. Nice. So that was uh, $98 later. A t shirt was shipped to you from Taiwan. <laughs> Next up, you know him, you love him. He ain't gonna buy no T-shirt off the internet. It's Eric Siska. We did it. Oppie did it. My yes. campaign worked. Yes. I I I forged a bunch of ballots and drove them around. <laughs> the election integrity. We stole it and we got it. What a bunch of suckers, dude! They didn't even see your ass coming, huh? That's right. That's right. <laughs> and the scholarly one of us all. I think he might be reading something about the Oscars this week. Let's bring him in and find out this. It's Mr. Christopher Cabin. Of course, after Ryan O'Neill had struck his daughter for winning Paper Moon, he started having a tradition of hitting any kid who won. Anna <laughs> Patton had to be rushed tradition. out of the back stage on her night. Kristen Dunst barely missed his fist the last time she was up for interview with a vampire. Of course, he was not there to give it to uh, the, the kid from the room. I forget his name. Shut up. Um, <laughs> Jacob uh, Tremblay. Jacob Tremblay, of yeah. course. Of course, a, a wonderful story mm. about Ryan O'Neill, who did pass, sadly. Uh, yes. You know. One of our best child hitters out there. Yeah, I, like really. It- top stuff. Kind of stunning. Like, there's a dude who uh, should have been Farina, but wasn't. No. Um, <laughs> yeah. I thought for a second, I thought for yes. a second he got the hammer at the end there. Cause, like, they, it was like Ryan O'Neill, and then they did the, like, the camera shift. And I was like, yeah. we're giving it to Ryan O'Neill. It yeah. was such an awkward, like, we're cutting away, we're doing different things. I'm like, what's going on? Yeah, yeah. it was Pog- terrible. Who was, was it? Pagliacci and his son? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Who's the fucking uh, guy's name? It's one of the I, three. Andre it's one of the three but, was it uh, Andre Bocelli? Bocelli and his son. Uh, okay. Yeah. Bocelli, and that, and that dude was that dude wasn't a three tenner. Was he? He wasn't. I thought I he was. Was Andre Bocelli a third a third I, tenor? I have literally no idea, but I thought he w- was. But anyway, <laughs> so the son died as well. Was that another helicopter oh, type of incident, or what? What are we talking about here? Yeah. So yeah, he's, he's singing. He, he is a he is a third tenor. Oh, was he? Oh, okay. Yeah, oh, yeah. I didn't, wait. So was he the other guy then let's, on so the Seinfeld see. joke? Uh, Three, it might have been. Or... I don't know. He's the bl- <laughs> he's blind. That's all I know. Uh, it he's, is. He certainly is. A guy. To, oh, it's. Po- I think it's. Get the fuck out of here. Uh, <laughs> oh no, maybe not. All right, no. So he's not. So it's it's Pavarotti, Domingo, and Carreras. Okay. Yeah, okay. I, I didn't think so. Okay. Yeah, there we go. So then, okay. There we go. I mean, uh, Carreras being so the other guy. This was just, right. <laughs> This is just the musician guy that died. Another mm. opera. No singer, one is a, dead. A it's the dude. The dude that was singing <laughs> the, the singing. fucking song last night. Oh, okay. Night. It's, it's, he's right. a very. He's Excuse a very. Fa- look, he's a very famous opera singer that your parents and grandparents love. I yeah. really doubt that. <laughs> well, not you. I'm, I mean, everybody else in the world. Not yes. You. Better than Generally. Michael Bublé. I'll tell you that much. That's well, true. Uh, uh, I mean, but the, it's true. The, the fucking the way they kept on cutting to them, like. I don't care about them. No, of I course not. They're, they're singing the song. No. That's nice. But just a, the, the, what's going on? A, I thought it's you a meant... trend with I, like, yeah. you know, the, the Emmys. It, we now focus way more on the person performing than the thing I care about, which is the people were memorial. Yes. That's yeah. what confused me because I thought you were we were talking about the giving them the hammer. And I was like, oh, shit. They, you know, oh, and this guy and his son also. Like Texas died. Chainsaw Massacre <laughs> style. Yeah. Uh, well, maybe uh, next year they might be yeah. in there. Next year, next year's Oscar maybe. memoriam. That guy and his son. 
Fingers make crossed. Make it happen. Dracula it and his son. Uh, <laughs> uh, okay, so uh, someone who, I don't he might have been farina I don't know if we were doing death reels at the time today, but guess what, guys? Today, Shemp Howard would have been 129 years old. <laughs> I mean, he would never be 129 yes, he years old. He, he would have if he didn't step on that nail or whatever. <laughs> yes. <laughs> uh, total legend in the voice acting community. Rob Paulson mm. turned 68. Mm. Uh, someone uh, we love here on the show, of course, Elias Codius. He turns uh, 63. Mm. Um, su uh, surprisingly, maybe a little d uh, tough to work with if you uh, hear onset rumors and otherwise. But Terrence Howard, mm. he's 55 today. Oh yeah, everybody. Uh, that guy's a pain in the ass. Everybody, like yeah. it's just common knowledge now. Isn't so it? what? So yeah. Chris, you seem to know a lot about this topic. What is he doing? What is it? What is his antics on set? Well, it's not even on set stuff. It's more like he's very pompous. I mean, like you hear all these stories about. Most actors are a little pompous. He, I mean, the famous story is the Iron Man. Like, I want what double what I got for the first mm. Iron Man to be in the mm -hmm. second Iron Man. And they're for like, you know what? Role. We can we can just get Don Cheadle. We can really. No, just do I just that. I have a I have a thing where it's a story where Terrence Howard was asked to like sign a guest book by like a 16 year old kid and the 16 year old kid gave him like a sharpie and he was like he flipped out and was like look at this suit I'm wearing you want me to get sharpie all over this and it was like dude why don't you go fuck yourself oh man yeah. I yeah. didn't know he was talking down to kids I kind of like him now well, that's me, man. <laughs> look at this t-shirt okay this is $98 you do you get sharpie all over this <laughs> They should. Uh, get, yeah. So they should make T-shirts at this point if they are going to make shirts like this to be Sharpie proof, because you know you're going to be around people who are signing stuff anyway. Let's. Yes. You know, it, they need more right. chemicals next to our skin at all times. Yes, please. Uh, please. Beloved uh, pop culture personality and uh, all-around jackass Johnny Knoxville turns fifty-three. Wow. Uh, Thora Birch is forty-two. She's still making movies or what? I don't know. Probably. No yeah. Uh, someone who definitely is. Uh, Jody Comer turns 31. Those are the birthdays this fine week, gentlemen. Happy birthday, everyone. Happy birthday, <laughs> Shemp Howard. Again, just want to shout <laughs> yeah, him out yet again. Absolutely. Uh, yeah, I'll be celebrating for... down in hell today. <laughs> yes, yeah. apologies for not getting you to the Lazarus pit so you could be 129 <laughs> years old. Yeah, <laughs> you and Shecky Green, we should we, we should put the effort in for those. And uh, to answer your question, Thor Birch uh, had a w had a guest appearance on Mayfair Witches in 2023, and she's got two movies come out somewhere soon called The Midway Point and Thirsty. I am sure both of those are directed DVD. Yes, yeah, somewhere yeah. soon. Who the hell knows? Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, so, pretty cool, guys. This weekend, a lot of new faces at the box office. Uh, mm -hmm. Let's take a look around at the numbers here. This is Highest Gross. Of course, we should say, fellas, uh, mm. good afternoon, good evening, good morning to everyone in the chat. We got Busiris87, Daniel Hood, Split Banana, Very Gooster, Knowledge Junkie, Foul, Logan Hill, D. Shuba. Thanks for joining us this fine day, folks. Thanks D. for Shuba, D. Shuba, D. Shuba, uh, D. Shuba McGavin, um, <sighs> Nico Fish, those stupid sandwich Jones, everybody here. Of course, by the way, gang, if you're not subscribed, to this very channel on YouTube. Might want to do that. Also, uh, like this video, all that good stuff. Help us uh, elevate the show's profile. Now, uh, doing the top five here on Highest Gross, of course. So first up, A Month in Theaters brings Bob Marley One Love to the uh, fifth spot today. Uh, 4.1 million. Still, it's just a massive hit. It's yeah. a, it did a good job. We um, saw our dude last night dancing around as one of the Kens. I was surprised yes. he did that um, yeah. with this yes. newfound stardom. Uh, I think just, they all got in there, right? Yeah, uh, Simulu is there too. Yeah. And then I don't know who the other white guy was. There's a big old white dude. I, I think that I is uh, 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 Chris Evans' brother. If oh, I remember, boy, oh, If boy. I remember what uh, Chelsea huh. was telling me last night. Okay. Yeah. Um, Kingsley Benadir, is that this dude's name who played Bob yes. Marley? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I'll probably be whoops, I'll probably be renting that uh, pretty yeah. soon. Yeah. Um, in at number four, 
from Angel Studios, mm -hmm. the studio and same director that brought you Sound of Freedom comes Cabrini. Ooh. What okay. the hell is this? Mm. Uh, what is this? A traveling seven, nun? 7.7 7 million at the box office. This, Eric Siska, is the cage. story of uh, St. Francis Xavier Cabrini. She mm. was an Italian uh, nun who moved to New York. Uh, I was just reading this on Wikipedia, actually, because Cabrini mm. uh, Street is up here in North Manhattan, where I live. Uh, she was a woman who was sainted by the Catholic Church. Uh, she was a... Um, Famous for pushing the mayor of New York at the time to invest in programs to help uh, orphans around oh, New York City. Wow. Yeah. Okay, I, I thought you were going to say, like, pushed him into the street or something. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, I think just, like, you know, turned the screws to him, made him look like Got an it. asshole for not I caring about orphans. That's funny, because I think the uh, projects in uh, Candyman are called Cabrini Green. Yes. <laughs> Cabrini yes, Green. She also she, yeah. she did work in Chicago as well. Yeah, so yeah. this is... This is an odd, like, this isn't about conspiracy theories and whatever. This is a well, we don't a know. biopic of a yeah. saint. I mean, yeah, it's we'll see. Yeah. 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 I don't know. <laughs> we'll see. I don't um, know if any of us are seeing it. Let, let be clear about that one. I don't even think I'm going to walk into this one. Uh, no, but, but like right down right down the road, like just downtown from, from my neighborhood is um, her, like, memorial like part of her oh. body is buried in there yeah i was well, learning parts of her body Dude, the, get this. The, the, the yes. catholics love that man they look a little bit of your fingy is hanging yes. out somewhere that's because saints yes. are too powerful if you get all the body together it'll reanimate mm -hmm. dude you're not you're not uh too far off here so like i, I was reading about this it's fucked up like her head is in rome mm -hmm. nice okay keep that uh -huh. there there's like an arm or a hand or something in Chicago, and like yeah. right. the rest of the body, the body is down the street from my house. What a very weird thing! The Catholics like to slice and dice their uh, saints. You gotta, I guess you break it up more than that. You can't yeah, just have like a torso, <laughs> legs, and one arm in, the, in New York. I, well, I think I, they were I, like, "We'll leave the body here. If this church is really successful, we'll cut her up. We'll get some sequels going." <laughs> yeah, that's that's an idea. How, I I just want to hear the discussion between them. Like, how do you negotiate who's getting the most of the body or the mm -hmm. most important part of? The, like, Rum is just like, "And no, we get to the head. We get yeah, the head." I think clearly, yeah. Wait, that, was the, at the end of the we're, movie. We're the end of the movie is like the, the Pope is like, ah, okay, uh, she a die. Uh, now get the heck of out. Uh, <laughs> it's just like the Pope saw. sharpening a knife. Uh, and now you'll get on the other side. <laughs> Swedish chef style, these big hands just moving this thing. <laughs> That's amazing. Okay. Yeah. New York, so, you get to have the heart. You can have the heart, I suppose. Mm. If you really did, want. Did oh, anyone actually, drink the blood at all? Or no, but the heart is somewhere else, if oh, I Jesus. recall. Yeah, no, it's it's really weird, guys. Her Wikipedia page is very fascinating. Uh, anyway, go. way more than I thought we'd ever talk about Cabrini, but that was uh, indeed in at number four. In at number three, a trailer that I kind of. Every time they show the little villain in this movie, I was cackling in the theaters. This is imaginary. Oh. Uh, from oh, Lionsgate. What the hell is this? I don't know about I, this. Oh, I've seen it once. They barely advertised it to, to zero times. Jeff Wadlow, excuse me, one of the favorites of the WHM crew, the man behind Fantasy Island. Ooh. The, and <laughs> my God, this movie. It is hor It doesn't have as many like crazy twists as yeah. Fantasy Island, which I was kind of upset about. So you saw this, Chris? Oh yeah, oh yeah, I saw this. Me and mm -hmm. uh, me and Cameron Ripley yeah, were having uh, a, a good uh, time. Uh, yeah, that's how you see uh, it. On, on Saturday night, we were hanging out. Someone uh, swarmed this guy already. I, I, <laughs> I, I, I've been trying to get Cameron swarmed for years, and he's just impossible. Uh, it is the ending. <laughs> It's kind of interesting, like when they go the last like twenty minutes of it, something cool happens, uh -huh. but like everything else is just so nothing. So it's like, about a spooky, spooky teddy bear. Is that what I'm spooky led teddy to bear? Believe? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah okay. That's about it. I, that's what I, I was be... laughing at in the pre. <laughs> <laughs> I'm t minus four weeks till I read this for twenty dollars. Guaranteed. Yeah, yeah. Guaranteed. Yeah. Oh yeah, without question. Now, Chris, let me ask you this though, because uh, as far as the Blumhouse output this year. Mm. Uh, so far, not great. Because was not a uh, haunted pool movie also this year? Yes. It was. Night so, Swim? Night, Night swim. swim. So is this better or worse than Night Swim? Huh. Chris's head exploded. <laughs> I, 
I kind of think I have to go with this one just because it's crazier. Sure. Okay, like, like the premise of Night Swim is insane, but like in the actual thing, or like it's kind of like the normal crazy things that happen. This, a uh, genuinely like, what the fuck was that? Like, mm -hmm. as <laughs> happens with Jeff Wadlow and his wonderful touch. Uh, I think he also did uh, tr don't uh, trust truth or dare. One of those. Oh yeah, uh, truth or dare, which is one of my one of my favorite films. Of yeah, time. I think he's also for that one. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> uh so there you go yeah big uh big rental vibes with that oh, one yeah. although i will say um if love lies bleeding wasn't out in limited release in new york this weekend i probably would have just gone and seen imaginary yeah. uh anyway in at number two fall from the top slot already but uh oh, still, no. wow. still still it's still totally uh, fine you guys 46 anyway. million dollars I know. Uh, we're looking at uh, what was the the transition down here? Oh, yeah, it only uh, dropped forty four percent. It's doing all right. Seventy two million dollars of this gross alone is IMAX. Steve Sadek, wow. stray thoughts on Dune two? Yeah, I saw it at the Kips Bay IMAX. Uh, we got okay. there by horseback, which is the only way to get there. You have, That's, you have to take a horse. Uh, you got to go back to 1890s New York City to get to that Kips Bay movie theater. It is so <laughs> fucking far out there, man. Uh, what I, was what was the reason for that? Just because you wanted IMAX and that was the closest or showtimes? Yes, exactly. Or? Yeah, exactly. It was, it, was, it was the IMAX. I didn't feel like going all the way uptown because we're downtown. Sure. Folks, yeah. uh, so it, it was a pretty packed screening. I loved it. I think it's... The one thing I was thinking about is I think it's a good example, an argument for if you're going to do like the big, big movie and we're going to break it in half or we're going to we're going to film it all together. Maybe don't do that. Maybe actually make the first half reflect on it and then you can make the second half because that's what this is. It's like, yeah, he Denny watched the first one and is like, what can I do to make this more exciting, more interesting, more balls to the wall? You know, it doesn't like. It's not like refuting the first one, but it does improve upon it, I think, in my opinion, in almost every mm -hmm. single way. Like, just the visuals are more interesting. The, the There's more action. There's more cool shit to keep your 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 mm -hmm. brain uh, uh, turning. Like Atomics. Thank you, Oppenheimer. He's in mo multiple <laughs> movies. Yes. I, I, it is great that we see an underdog win like Oppenheimer. It's not often that <laughs> yes, of someone come up and from under like that. <laughs> from up and under that's the old chris cabin maneuver yeah yeah uh, <laughs> uh so that means of course in at number one kung fu panda four y'all look mm. at this do wow. not ever count out the family friendly box office folks 58.3 yeah. <laughs> million dollars it's the biggest debut for one of these uh kung fu panda movies since kung fu panda one i mean yeah. it makes sense because I mean, like everyone was still seeing that migration movie. People were still going to Wonka. Like they were desperate for new Hungry. blood in the family yeah. yep. in the market. Oh yeah, this is gonna be the top five for the rest of the year. <laughs> it might be like it's also gonna do crazy international numbers. This one, this one oh, will sure. go nuts. Uh, but yeah, I, I'm kind of I like Jack Black. I kind of like knowing he's making money. If, if I've never, gonna... yeah. Go, uh, oh no, oh no, yeah. I, I nothing but goodwill to Jack Black. I've never, I've never seen a Kung Fu Panda. Neither have I. Actually. Yeah, First one's good. Yeah. Yeah, I, I really like the first one. I he, I haven't watched the second one since it came out, and I saw it with one of my cousins. But I remember thinking that was fine. I, like, I at that point, I was like, "Oh, it's just an animated movie, and it's yeah, yeah not a big sure. one." So, like, it's just entertaining. But they're better. I mean, what the good thing about it is for all the people in this room who like kung fu movies, essentially they do do kung fu fights, and like yeah. they do all like oh, okay. it's just not as impressive as actual people doing oh it. so uh, does, does a panda do their own stunts uh, <laughs> yes they do they got them you know it was a lot of that was a hell of a negotiation with china i will tell you that <laughs> but you know that this is i mean obviously one a theatrically released fourth film but also i feel like this is definitely shrek status because there's like tv shows and like specials and yes. one-off things with this also like you find with yeah. all them shrek the halls and whatnot and, and, and in those in those terms this is so much better than the shrek move like yeah, oh, yeah on the on the power of the first one alone it's just such a better series than that also it's been eight years since they put out one of these so that's well, i was i was wondering about the yeah. the gap in time that's interesting yeah that's crazy um daniel hood in the chat says that gary oldman voices the villain uh, in Kung Fu Panda 2 and is really that sounds good. right. Right. Harry uh, S. Truman. I think Viola um, Davis. Viola Davis is the villain in this one. You cannot. 
You cannot perform a crane kick with your mouth in the mouth of a tiger. With the head in the mouth of a tiger. Literally, a tiger is a guy that has his mouth on my head. <laughs> he has a guy. It's like a literal dude. <laughs> yeah. He's a little man. Uh, so, interestingly, over on the Patreon gang, patreon.com slash we hate movies, I've started doing a Friday afternoon uh, box office related poll. And check this out. Congratulations to the 31 people who had confidence in Kung Fu Panda 4 taking over, Love man. 69% yeah. of uh, folks weighing in thought Dune 2 for sure. Never count out that family box office, y'all. Parents. Um, Parents, everybody. They hate their kids and they need somewhere to put them for two hours. Mm -hmm. It's got every yeah. every ding dong week. Um, elsewhere at the box office specialty numbers, Love Lies Bleeding, uh, which Chris and I'll talk about in a sec. From A24, limited on five screens around the country, 167K. Five screens, shy. my God. Mm -hmm. Yep. Um, Look at these this, little special screen boys over here. I know. This Friday, it goes up to 12 hundo, uh, 1,200 yeah, screens. I will be, I'm already so. making plans. Yep, I got tickets for Sunday. Ooh, I, I, I like that. I, I, I'm going to go on a limb. Steve, you are going to really like this movie. Interesting. Having known your history and love of uh, Ed Harris. Genre. Genre mm -hmm. movies. Yeah. Uh, oh, uh, you mean yeah, knowing his his search history? Right. The Ed, he had the whole encyclopedia of that down at one point. Ed Harris. <laughs> yes, Ed Harris. About. Of course, yeah, yeah, you're yeah. a big Ed Harris fan. Thank you. You thank love you. the right stuff and Apollo. I might spend 167 thousand dollars on that fucking poster, dude. I'll tell you that much. <laughs> <laughs> Get that uh, State mod one. We'll mm. talk about that at, at length in a uh, moment, but check this out, guys. This spring, which now, officially, we can start saying next month, we're going to start playing some spring shows here. First yeah. up, we're talking Gamer. Gamer. Uh, Gerard Gamer. Butler action movie. Press X to ride. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, I would love it. Just a moment in this movie of Gerard Butler is just like tapping his foot like Sonic. Like, where are we going? Yeah, you yeah. have to move me. They also, his teeth was disturbing people as well, so they re-edited those. <laughs> Get Gerard Butler's real teeth out and put some <laughs> fake teeth in. Uh, no, we'll be talking all about this at the City Winery in Hotlanta, Georgia on the 25th of April, uh, mm. which is just next month, gang. So wow. be prepared for that. Oh, uh, yeah. And then the next month, doing a little Texas two-step. First up, we are going to Houston for what will be our Houston debut, folks. We can't stress that enough. First mm -hmm. time checking out this wonderful city space city houston texas we'll be at the houston improv talking robocop 2 great movie yes, by the way. yes come on out to that give us a warm welcome or you know you don't want us to shun you for life no because it could happen we've shunned some cities before oh yeah and mm -hmm. we'll shun again oh yeah there's atlanta <laughs> just got off the shun list actually it's it's, it's, it's right that? back it's, you've been de-shunned uh and the very next night after our debut in Houston, Texas, we are going back to Austin, Texas for the first time in six years doing a We Love Movies official We Love Movies episode about From Dust Till Dawn. Mm -hmm. It's going to be a hot, dark night, Steve Sadak. <laughs> a dark <laughs> night. I love to do that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, so uh, I'm excited for this. I'm yeah. uh, jealous of all my buds that are in Austin right now. Uh, so it's going to be great to get back there. It's a fucking killer city. I we always have fun there. We do every time. And I will be. I know a lot of people are asking. I am. I will be playing Eric's corpse like a guitar. <laughs> yeah. in half of the show. Mm -hmm. we, Chris, I, it took a little bit of negotiation to get to this, but we, we're here. Only if you leave some fingies in uh, New York City, the uh, hearts in Rome, the yes. brains you can destroy, the skull sure. in Antarctica. Do you, want, do you want like arms or something in Chicago? I know you're like uh, you're a big Chicago boy. So yeah, 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 exactly. Okay. My arms were built in Chicago. I was born there. So put my arms in Chicago okay. and tell them my story. Get Angel Studios to make <laughs> sure. the movie. I, I will pitch it to them, but I, I need to do the. I need to play it first, and then I can do that okay mm, okay you know, uh, <laughs> all right that's fine yes just rip me apart use me like okay. a xylophone i don't give a shit okay uh but we'll be talking all about that movie a cap city comedy on may the 15th in houston texas it's gonna be a lot of fun i'm fucking psyched um so okay chris cabin we'll uh mm. 
we'll get this review in here before its expansion sure. uh, this Friday. Love Lies Bleeding, just the really new one quickly. from Rose Glass. What are we talking, Steve Sadak? You just know, oh, you know that I'm a spoiler phobe. I'm just saying, I'm not, I'm not doing it right now, but I might, I might. If you guys go, go over, <laughs> go overboard. That's fair. It's totally, it's totally fine, Steve. Do whatever makes you feel comfortable, my friend. <laughs> yeah. I might join you, Steve. Just let me know. We'll both. Uh, I'll look over your shoulder and I'll <laughs> help. I'll read that as well. I don't uh, have Chris, any. I don't have much spoilery to say, so I no. Don't there's think nothing. I mean, no. I mean, because the stuff that you would spoil, you know right away that it would be a big spoiler. So that, I'm not no. going to get into anything there. I will say, Chris. First of all, though, um, I need to at some point. Uh, well, we got a busy ass week here, so maybe this is weekend viewing. I got to see this Saint Maud because Rose Glass directed a hell of a picture here. Saint Maud, uh, is it yeah. good? It yeah. was, I don't know, didn't that get sort of like a weird fucked by the pandemic release maybe yes, or something? Probably. I completely yeah. missed it. We, I know a lot of people it, yeah, liked for it. Sure. We, we streamed it for sure. Oh, yeah. yeah. Um, it, it was been out for a while. Uh, yeah, but so uh, this is fucking great. This is, uh, uh, it's what I hoped and thought driveway dolls might be, if that makes sense. Um, it was much more of what I was looking for as far as like, the violence mixed with there is a lot of comedy in this movie it's very fucking funny um i did not watch the trailer so i don't know how much they allude to the comedy but like case do in this movie very funny yeah oh i think she's great in this uh i the whole thing i i I kind of get, I always get a little weird with genre movies because I'm like, it, it's so easy to just play by the normal rules. Just do the normal, hit this, hit this, hit this, hit this, and then we're out. Right. This was just so much more interesting for what they picked to focus on. Like the idea, like th the familial element of it, uh, which we won't get into too much, but like, like the working out stuff, the little, yeah. uh, the working of a criminal enterprise in a small town like this and actually getting at how it's interconnected like that. These are little details that I really like. And yes, I mean, on top of that, Katie O'Brien, K. Stu, Ed yeah. Harris looking insane. Ooh, um, dude, if there's <laughs> any reason to not watch the trailer, it's so you maybe don't have to know what Ed Harris looks like in this movie. The scumbag factor. It's the skull and I've seen it already. Oh, yeah. Yeah. yeah, it was like oh, riffraff. Oh. <laughs> it's incredible <laughs> oh yeah he just needs a hunchback and he's totally riffraff it's i mean he he's back guys like yeah, i don't know I love that i don't know I where he's him. been i feel like whatever i've seen him in of recent note hasn't been anything that's really wowed me i think this is the most he's wowed me since history of violence mm. like mm. wow he's okay. really fucking good and terrifying in the movie um I do love the like small it, it captures small nothing towns so perfectly like you can fucking smell this town you can feel the temperature out on the street coming off the screen like it's captured so amazingly and like Kristen Stewart and Katie O'Brien every scene they have together is incredible like great fucking chemistry um, and it's weird because it's like I don't want to sound like I don't think Kristen Stewart is also you know not great in this movie. She is great, but like I've seen her be great before. Yeah. Katie O'Brien stretching so far from like Star Wars and fucking Quantum Mania for Christ's yeah. sakes. Like this is a real deal star term performance from Katie O'Brien. I'm really um, happy about that because she is I, honestly like even that she was the best part of that last season of The Mandalorian. Like I was like oh shit yes. here she comes again. Yep, mm -hmm. all her shit was the yeah far and away the most interesting part. So good chemistry. Mando. You said good chemistry. Yeah. How's the biology? <laughs> oh, the, the, the biology's right where you want it to be, baby. And that's the other thing, man. We just got some sexy sex scenes in this movie, and you know, no one was fucking running out of my theater. Packed fucking house, by the mm. way. Yeah, um, that's for a movie to be hot. I'm sorry, it's nice. Yep. You know, it's it's, it's something it's, you don't get to often, and yeah. like. Also, I mean, this movie, much like St. Maud, is talking, I mean, it has ideas. Like, it's talking about, like, self, like, how we hurt ourselves, how that, how learning lessons about things like that is actually hard. It takes a couple times. You fuck yep. up a lot before you ever get to any kind of clear decision about things like that. And it actually makes that a part of the drama. It makes it a bigger part of the drama than, like, the violent part of stuff, which is usually it goes the other way. Um so I yeah, the just... violence the violence is in this movie but the violence intense. doesn't dominate the movie exactly uh, if that uh, and that's it is very... it is intense though oh yes and, and that is very much like uh saint maude for people who have seen it and uh -huh. there are like 
two or three major whoa moments and then like yes. most of the other uh rest of it is very simmering psychological stuff the i'll tell so. you what the two ladies in front of me were not prepared for the violence that goes down in this movie uh which was kind of also equally entertaining for me to watch uh, a lot of like ducking out of the way like oh. putting our hand you know oh. real physically moving away from the screen kind lot, of stuff. maybe screams were they screaming were they scared there, not not in front of me but there were some like whoa like <laughs> really like people taken aback by some of the violence which is great because it's like it's this great blood soak you know queer neo-noir like i fucking loved it i know it's very early but I'm confident in saying this for me will be one of my favorites of the year. With well, I'm excited. I know you know I haven't seen it yet, but sex and violence is what we go to the movies for, folks. Absolutely, uh -huh. goddamn right, dude. Uh, so there you go. And when you guys see it, we'll weigh in with some specialty box office uh, next week. Because I'm curious what y'all think of it, Steve, for Steve's reasons, and Eric because he really likes neo noirs. Uh, oh, come on! Oh, come on! <laughs> uh, so Harris all right, my good. dudes. Oh, actually, Eric, hmm. I just got something in here. Oh, the intern uh, just dropped something off at the desk here that I think we'll address before we get into Hollywood's biggest night. A little bit of uh, we hate movies lore is about to be explained to our viewers here. That's right. You you know, some people have write in and they're like, why do you guys say daughter weird? Or will you say daughter and then you could correct to dirter? It is my dirter. Yes, my dirter. Uh, well, <laughs> well, this, this will commercial... help answer that. Yes, this aired during the pandemic and it changed all of our lives basically we would see this every because we didn't do anything i mean uh, you know we no. did nothing no. it was just drinking you know nope. whiskey staring at the tv getting <laughs> angrier and angrier and then this would come on and cheer up my day so here we go this is uh for something i don't even know if it's still around anymore they were calling themselves betfair casino let's take a look my daughter and I have tried other online casinos, but Betfair is the best. Real players, real stories. I feel like Betfair gives the best bonuses. You've won with a few. That's right. <laughs> you can play your favorite casino games anywhere in New Jersey. Join today to play your first day risk-free up to $200. I've been going to the casino since you had to wear a sports jacket to get in. Yeah, and now my dad plays in his pajamas at home. <laughs> play your way at BetfairCasino.com. You've won a few. <laughs> My dad's playing in his pajamas at home. And her, 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 somehow, somehow she gets an R into the word home. Oh, uh, it's oh, so it. yes. Uh, just throw R's oh. anywhere you like. Oh, I hope, that I hope they're South Jersey accent. Oh, I hope they're both doing very well. <laughs> I'm oh, sure yeah. you never have to wear a sports jacket again. <laughs> never again. I, I hope, never in your life, sir. Yeah, I hope you I hope you got a straight flush while you were flushing. <laughs> How about that? That's what I hope for you, sir. You know, Dad, I don't care what kind of what kind of heater you're on. I need to use the toilet. <laughs> I'm sick of shitting outside. <laughs> He's bringing the laptop into the toilet. All right, here we go. <laughs> my daughter needs to use the toilet. Oh, uh, oh me just... and my girder. My lovely I'm glad, girder. I'm glad you found that. God bless you know, them. And also, you know, this is not an advertisement. Don't no, actually no, go no, no, to no, no, Betfair no, no, no. Casino doubt whatever. All, no, all online not... bettings stay away from generally speaking, I would say. Yes, or, exactly. Yeah. yeah. Uh, but there you go, folks. A little piece of uh, WHM lore brought into the light. Uh, okay. Mm -hmm. Hollywood's weirdest, biggest night. Here we go. My goodness gracious. No real uh, surprises for me, honestly. Almost done, yeah. I mean, no, poor no. things did better than I would have expected, and that's about it. Yeah. yeah. Actually, the one thing that surprised me, Zone of Interest getting sound, totally justified. Yes. But I yep. just thought it would be on the oppie roll by then. Yes. But. Yes. Um, so let's get into it first with uh, the Farina, the departed, the Farina. Now, Chris Cabin, should mm. we explain really quickly about what if for folks just joining us? Maybe they're getting hip to the program. This was uh, this is a picture of Dennis Farina, who was an yes. actor, and what happened. Well, whatever year it was that uh, Dennis Farina passed and, and left us, the, I mean, fuck God for that, first of all. Uh, but, uh, <laughs> whatever that happened, the, uh, we, you get the Oscars in memoriam yeah. section hits. You assume it's Dennis fucking Farina. Everybody knows him. Everybody loves him. Where is he? He's not there. Nope. You, everybody is stunned. This is the, the guy from thief. He started with Michael Mann. Come on yeah. guys. It was 2013. Crime story. 
2013, he passed away. So maybe it was the early 2014, 2014. ceremony. So we've been we've been doing 10 years of Farina, by the way. And we I think have. to credit, I believe Steve, you came up with the the phrase. Absolutely. Okay, uh, yeah, uh, sure. Yeah, okay. You right. you did take the credit for it, Steve. I'll you take credit. I'll take the victory take roses. <laughs> but no, but but Chris has made it a lifelong mission. That's I. You know, maybe maybe I, I made a little offhand joke. Chris does the work, and Chris lives it. So, and I will say, you are clearly living in the Academy's head rent free because this year <laughs> they yes. they did everything they could to, to combat the Farinas. They did everything. Yeah. <laughs> Someone went into a closed door and slammed. Is like we're not getting this Chris Cameron ever again. This Farina ing. We're you not going to have it worse. next year. Exactly. Yeah, it it's, worse. Worse. It's, it's so almost. Much worse. More insulting to have that one screen at the end. It's like here and here's everyone else. Yeah, here's yeah. the scraps. Some yeah. people got pictures. Here's the scraps. I was uh, like, a couple I, is a robot. Like it's it's, it's that. <laughs> Shocked I by Kenneth a, Anger being in that extra that was at insane. all. Yeah. Yes. I mean, I, I was happy that, yeah, of course, you you're a little wondering if Kenneth Anger is even going to be mentioned. But that thing, I was looking on Twitter for people who had pictures of it and nobody had it. So I was like, yeah. I'm not paying attention to this thing. No, fuck it. Like, no. I, I like, and like, I love Cormac McCarthy, but Cormac McCarthy being on there at like, and I get Treat it. It's a novelist. Well. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, he, he wrote the script to the counselor. That's about it. And, and obviously inspired No Country. No Country. And I mean, all the like, pretty horses. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. But it's like, still, still, like, yeah, I mean, there's yeah. so many other people who should be, if you're going to have that stupid list, who should be on the stupid list? Yes. Well, exactly. here's people uh, who were unfortunately not on the stupid list that you uh, did your digging and, and, and found out about. So, like, look at this. I mean, this is insane. Ray Stevenson, first of all. Uh, I mean, the the punisher. Actual, he's a punisher. He is a he, punisher, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> he is. I, and to be clear, some of these I think were actually on the list, but like yes, there was no right. way of looking. Even no. if you were watching the goddamn broadcast, it was nope. one shot, two shot, change it out. That was it. Because well, and also, from far away, it wasn't exactly, like a close up away. on the screen. I, and, yeah. and again, like the idea, like just show me the teleprompter show me what what the audience is seeing yes. on their big screen not right. the dance i don't give a fuck about the dance you know what i mean like yep <laughs> well, yeah. uh, I, I found i found the screen fellas and yes there's okay so kenneth anger's on there terrence davies is on there uh, Terrence davies was another one here on our list so yes okay shecky green is on this uh brief and this thing flashed for like half a second it's so yeah yeah there's uh, just no point in even doing it. Like, I, I, if you're going to do it, just picture, 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 one after the other. Yes, exactly. And yeah, when the big names hit, you can take a little longer for okay. them. That's Ray, fine. Ray Stevenson is on this giant list. Cormac McCarthy, um, uh, Lance about, Reddick is on there. Uh, Burt Burt Young. Young. Oh, yes, dude, and Tree Williams. I, you know, I just, I found it and <laughs> this, thought it looked funny. This is him on the way to the Oscars, but then he died. <laughs> oh, no. From Go Go Tales, uh, maybe. Yeah. Uh, so, Burt Young, Farina, Joss Ackland, Farina. This picture with the pipe uh, is great. This should have been in the fucking slideshow. Look absolutely. at that photograph. Oh, I, I just don't know how you there. don't get the clip of him saying uh, a, a diplomatic immunity <laughs> and him yep. getting his head blown off. I don't, everybody <laughs> quotes that all yes. the time. Why? Uh, Everybody I know, at least. Yes. <laughs> uh, character actor Michael Lerner, of course. Mm, um, the best. He was Farina. Uh, yeah, he is on this brief, this little list. flash card. Okay. He's there. Sinead O'Connor is on there as well. Is Ken Lerner now the last living Lerner, or what's the deal here, Chris? I, I'm not aware, but I would assume so. I don't think there were any other siblings yeah. were there. Um, or is Lerner someone who, again, like, Ken Lerner's still like alive, jerk. so he, he's around. Okay, that's good. Um, <laughs> I don't want to sound like a jerk, but there are just people who deserved photographs. Treat Williams is one yes. of those people. Yes, yes. absolutely. Like, come on. What are you talking about? Yeah. What are you talking about? He's a movie Every, star. He's in, I mean, he's in movies. They did show photographs for entertainment executive yes, or lawyer because it's like oh we guys got a friends involved here yeah. You know? yeah i was kind of yeah, surprised yeah. under brower made the list even though i mean like i think under brower is fantastic he's just more of a tv guy for me but yes. like yep. he, but he, certainly he's, he's been in a ton of movies uh i think they show a scene from glory was that it uh possibly they showed oh, a scene i did something he was in i didn't um, recognize the clip it wasn't yeah. uh rise of the silver surfer <laughs> it was TV. not rise of the silver probably surfer. shouldn't that out yeah. there <laughs> uh but yeah lance you know yes Arguably known more for TV, but yeah. was in a lot of movies, man. Yeah. 
I mean, um, I just yeah. I think of this as like again showing the age of the uh yeah. most of the makeup of the academy like it's sure. just like of course we care about these old people that we've known for forever and like lance reddick who like just passed recently is probably well more well known to the 35 and under crowd yeah like it doesn't yeah. matter so much to them even though it's clearly the person they would want to see everybody would want to see up there and I'm sorry, we don't need, and I'm not saying these people are not important and didn't contribute to show business, no. but like marketing executives, distribution sure. consultants, like meh, put don't... them on the stupid list. No, no, yep. the stupid yep. list is for them. Technical awards needs an in memoriam. Just do that <laughs> a brief one there for all the executives, for the gaffers sure. who might have sure. passed. Yeah, yeah, that's fine. Go right ahead. Uh, Another one, and I mean, this is not surprising, but as Chris pointed out, we were just talking about something from her body of work last week on, on We Hate Movies, but uh, Carlin Glenn passed away. Yeah. She was uh, Roy Scheider's high school love uh, and future mother-in-law uh, in of course. A Night Game last week. Yeah, yeah. Which She's is been around very for a while. Funny. A bunch of stuff. This woman did not want that free TV in that movie. She, <laughs> no, she did not. absolutely did not. Uh, so those were just some of the snubs. I mean, there were a bunch of people for Rena, as always. Uh, check oh, yeah. Chris's Twitter for for some more there. Uh, can I move it? Oh yeah, sure. A, go ahead. Can I do a helicopter observation about the show last night? Yeah. Way too short. Yeah. Not enough fucking. I love the magic of the movie montages. Maybe that's just me. Like I, I actually love that shit. There was Those only are always kind of great. There was only one for the stuntmen. It was really, really short. They didn't show clips from movies almost at all, except for the the best picture noms. And then they brought back my least favorite thing, which is oh god, and you, Paul Giamatti. Oh, oh man, and the, and the only, <laughs> like you know what? If you're gonna do that, do that for every fucking. I want I want yes. costume designers. I want five yeah. fucking costume designers to come out and talk yep. about costume design for twenty minutes. Yep, you're if totally we're gonna do right. that. What's good it's for the stupid. goose, dude? This it fucking stupid. the way these the they announced them all with like the audio from like when they yeah. won their Oscar and then this the the curtain comes up or whatever like they're the Avengers, dude. Like get out of here with that. Like yeah. it's cool. Sure, it's it's cool seeing people you haven't seen in a while. Sure, sure. but like man, does it take forever? And the other thing is like the writing evolved over the the night as far as these debuts were concerned and by the end they were better by the end it was like just about the performance and it was yeah. kind of more fine that they were reading like clearly reading things but those earlier ones first of all there was way too like everyone saying my friend my friend my friend yeah. and i was like <laughs> are you actually friends with this person or is I, it are you just like uh, being i found them to be kind of spoilers too because right when nick cage was talking to paul giamatti i'm like giamatti's not winning this no way in fucking hell <laughs> would they pair nick cage with the winner i yeah just, yeah i mean but I, I, nick cage I, was I, my I, favorite he was pretty badass i, I, I liked yeah. it, it was I, I will say this though the cage and giamatti interaction was the only one of them i like I'm not it's saying it wasn't good. Where I, was, I just they actually, knew they wouldn't pair him with the winner. That's well, all. Uh, and uh, like, uh, uh, Forrest Whitaker just got like a fucking index card about Coleman Domingo 30 seconds prior. Yes, and it was like, dude. Who is, oh, yeah, I remember that guy. Oh, yeah. and that, that was, was where I started worst. thinking. Uh, I was like, because he said my friend. And I was like, you're not fucking friends with him, are you, <laughs> like Forrest you Whitaker? together, you know what I mean? And like, and we did a lot of like. And we'll get the black guy to talk about the black guy. Look at black yep. guy talking about the black guy. Like we did a that lot was, of that yeah, last yeah. night. Yeah. Very odd. Very fucking odd. Um, <laughs> yeah, please don't do those ever again. Mm -hmm. Uh, but what did we think about uh Mr. Man himself, the host of the evening, James Kimmel? Yeah. I, I thought think he was fine. I think it's fine. I think it's time. Honestly, like my favorite well, probably my favorite part of the night was John Mulaney coming in doing the Field of yep. Dreams. I was like, and it seemed almost like an audition because why oh, else would he would he be there? It, you know what I, I mean? Think like, you're right. John and I'm like, Mulaney, go right ahead. The man was made in a fucking vat to create something that hosts events. Like yes. that was his whole. <laughs> yes, it, it, you designed him to do this. Why not yeah. let him do it? But it, I don't think he it, wants I, to do it. Yeah, I, I mean, Maybe that's almost it. nobody wants to do it because it, it is a thankless job. Yeah, you're either going to get totally roasted. I mean, like the idea that you would get like completely like uh, lauded for it at this day and age is really unlikely. It's yeah. never going to happen. But as Chris said, though, like he is very well suited sure. to do something like this. And frankly, like 
it looked like he was having a lot of fun doing that field of dreams bit. And if you just turned the hosting gig into that, because like that's always where it's strongest, right? When you play to the actual strengths of the host. That's why like Billy Crystal, he's a song and dance man. Every one of his was a song and dance thing because that's what the dude can do really well. And with Mulaney, it is that just like super fast delivery. Yeah. Seemingly scattered all over the place, but you can see where the bit's growing and going. Mm-hmm. Like, I think it's a perfect match. He should I mean, have been like, doing it. I'm, I'm tired. I mean, like, I like him all fine. I don't, I don't have any uh, ill will towards him, but like, the whole like, well, oh man, are we running late? Guess we got to restart. He does that every. It's like your uncle at Thanksgiving, right, yeah. and it's like, <laughs> dude, I know that I overloaded on on mashed potatoes three years ago, but we right. have to get over it. But there were we really some, have to get over. It. I, I agree that the, the, the talking about the time was not really the move. There was some fun like dad ask jokes that I oh, enjoyed, sure. but and it was and it, it kept things light and it, he moved it along. I don't really yes. have any problem with how he hosted. No, he's a real workman. I think for, for this job, it, 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 he works. It's yeah. It's, you're not gonna. He and rightfully, he's not gonna like get the headline the next day because he do, doesn't really want it. I think. Right. I mean, to me, he oh, he's always since taking over or you know starting that late night with Jimmy Kimmel, like, and these hosting gigs, he feels like a dude that would have been just as comfortable in old Hollywood. And I don't know if that's because like. He's born and bred like Vegas kid. So like maybe yeah. that's got something to do with it. He just feels like he's got a show business thing about him. Like he's a dude that can say show business and I'm not like, you're full of shit. Like yeah. he says it and you're like, that's kind of genuine. The dad stuff I thought was funny, but like, yeah, the second you start doing, you're playing the hits with that fucking we're going long one, you've done it, but also like, you weren't, you know, don't you see that you doing the bit talking about making it longer is also making it longer? Yes, Come I, I on just, already. And why I like, like Steve Martin, Billy Crystal, why I like these guys to handle this stuff is because I'm not going to have to sit there and watch the uh part of his show bringing the Jimmy Kimmel show to the Oscars to yes. do a tequila commercial. That's yeah. true. Which, uh, that's true. which oh, that's drove true. me fucking crazy. I've not liked yeah. the fucking relation, that relationship thing. The we- It's weird as hell. I think uh, him and his sidekick there. Okay. Oh, Guillermo? Yeah. 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 I think that's all really strange, but like, uh, the bigger thing is just, it's not your, it's not your show. You are here yeah. to host it. You are here to create like Steve Martin, bringing the dip to Danny DeVito. Remember yeah. that? Like the little things of like personality interactions, like yeah. but the turning like because it's Jimmy Kimmel and it's uh his show's going to be on like what in an hour after it or yeah. something like that. Like it just becomes a a, a a thing where they're sharing it all, and I get annoyed every time, every single time. I don't like him at all. I'm sorry. I mean that was I also, crazy. you know, no, it's totally fine. Um, <laughs> I think the other thing though, like that sort of plays into that, and again, I wonder how much of it is Kimmel versus the studio because like how many fucking times was he forced at gunpoint to tell you that after the Oscars there was a new episode of Abbott Elementary? Oh <laughs> boy. You know what I mean? Like Jesus Christ. Was, ABC. Web? was it was it is it was, it was Bradley, it was Cooper. Yeah I Bradley figured it was, Cooper. It was the Philadelphia thing. Yeah, uh yeah, speaking yeah. of uh I'm so Rachel in the chat a messy fake pissing on Matt Damon's star at the end. Yep. Pretty humorous how do you get a dog to fake piss on something? Is my question. Like, how do you treat teach a dog? Mm-hmm. Like, you're like, hey yeah. man, you know when you lift your leg and you release yourself, we want you to do the first part, but not the second part. Like, how do I you think? Do- I think here's what it is, dude. Because sometimes I'll see this in my neighborhood walking Marty, and sometimes Marty herself will do this in yeah. her own way. But like, if you if you got a dog like just walking along and it's doing like territoriality, like, oh, I'm yeah. gonna smell something and I'm gonna leave my whatever, they'll be like straight running on fumes and they'll go to do (laughs) it but like nothing happened so i imagine what was going on was after Messi's the funny speaking of swedish chef the puppet hands of the dog clapping i think after that they were like all right boy come on let's go they went out on like hollywood boulevard walking them up and down pissing everywhere until that very end of the night (laughs) moment and it was like all right Messi, do the leg trick and there was just nothing in the tank dude i got i got nothing Uh, left i would have loved to do it Hot streams of real piss, <laughs> maybe mm-hmm. some steamy loaves also mm. delivered. <laughs> it would have been. I mean, I I know it's stupid, but 
the ongoing fake feud between Jimmy Kimmel and Matt Damon, I think, is one of the... It makes me crack up. I don't know why. It's, it's just it's it's very, very funny. funny. Uh, speaking of something I thought was very funny, what did you guys think about Mr. Cena? The funny oh, bit. my God. It was a good bit. Ooh. I mean, His... that guy, he, he was very close to dangling brain, man. He looks like a shaved animal, huh? Look at this yeah. thing. That thing, yeah, that thing is that? not meant. That shouldn't be walking down the street with me. That belongs <laughs> somewhere else. Well, we all missed Stadicki, right? That was this week. Who who watched? Ricky oh, I didn't Stadicki. miss it, baby. Oh, you I did not. Wait, what God. is this? Damn. The next uh, the, by Oscar winner Peter Farley. You're gonna yes. win, miss the latest. Come on, uh, yeah. yeah. The Explain auteur not- behind Green Book. Yeah, the Green Book Man. Uh, I have. I did not. Uh, Zach Efron in a big box dumb comedy. It was Am- news who, to me. Amazon? Didn't know about this. It was Amazon. Yeah, uh, I think it was. Yeah, it was Amazon. Yeah, yeah I think so. Uh, yeah, it's horrible, but uh, yeah, what, surprise, <laughs> surprise on that one. Um, it's like I, a I mean, rent a friend thing. Yes, like they they've been making up a friend for forever, and then they get called on it, and they're like, we okay. need to have someone play it, and they met this person, and the big joke with john cena is he has a local las vegas show where he does covers of songs but reworded to be about masturbation oh that's pretty funny and that is essentially the biggest joke of the movie uh and and they really ride that one (laughs) and i actually i I like that cena went for it like i think the lock had it had to do a little bit a little bit after that he just 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 so on fumes at this point just, he's yeah. a robot dude it was really bad it was him and bad bunny that's uh, right i was like announcing... you're not such a bad bunny <laughs> that dude man. dude yeah it was pu town man that thing fucking clanked down the stairs that we'll joke. see what happens with that betty safty movie he's doing but this that guy needs a readjustment he the, definitely rock, the rock as it is now i feel like you're you're you blew it pal just get off the screen forever you're Black just, Adam I mean, might be the last movie of his that I ever watch. It, it, it's it's entirely possible. <laughs> I mean, they're just had, coming yeah. to this situation where both of them, Rock and Cena, like uh, you, you've uh, spent all of your uh, stupid movie uh, money. Yeah, you right. you have to do a real movie now. It's been yeah. you, you've really you've done enough. Like I actually really I know uh, I, I'm not crazy about the movie. It's okay, uh, but I thought he was really good in Trainwreck. I was like, he's one of the best parts of this fucking movie. Uh, and like since I was like, hey, let's keep going. Let's maybe he's going to be a funny guy. And it's been terrible, uh, yeah. a- including this. And like, I just hope someone finds him too, not just The Rock. I hope someone finds something good for John Cena because I do think he's a funny guy. Yeah. Peacemaker season two, man. It's happening. Oh, oh yeah. That's going to be great. Um, real quickly here uh, Arnold and Danny loved it. Battling yeah. Michael Keaton, who was so into it. it I got to say, fun. What do you guys think about this statement? Tell me if this is uh, kind of maybe too out of left field, but um, Michael Keaton doing Batman stairs at the Academy Awards last night, better performance than Michael Keaton in Batman in the as Batman in the Flash. Absolutely, yes, <laughs> definitely. <laughs> Just without just, question yes i mean he pause. was he was so fucking good right there look at that uh, he's even got like a bruce wayne neckerchief thing on well and it, uh, so mean, it has been, uh, but actually uh george clooney battled uh, uh arnold there for yeah, a second sure uh-huh. some fucking well, here's, loser got out of bed to type that somewhere here's a key element for why this works and uh, uh the flash doesn't he was looking at other human beings when he did <laughs> yeah. this thing. So, I mean, it was, the, yep, he, there was true. something to react to there. So other was, human beings you respected thing. one way or another as actors. <laughs> yes. yes. That's, <laughs> not a green that's, wall. Uh-huh. That's who you had there. Uh, yeah, no, I thought that was delightful. And I thought, because they were introducing an uh, editor and Jennifer Lame won for Oppenheimer. And she was like, I love twins. And this is very weird, which I thought was funny. Well, they also did, uh, the, uh, they're lucky he didn't win because where the other Yorgos who edits poor things, Arnold just is like, Yorgos Alamagas. <laughs> oh no. Oh, Alakazam. No. Oh no. Let's be honest, that's close enough. <laughs> <laughs> You're right though, Steve. That fucking pronunciation crashed right into the mountain. Mm-hmm. Uh, Eric, if you were ever nominated for an, a, an Academy Award and they uh-huh. fucked up your name, I would never no. not hear about it. I would hear about no. it until the day you died. There's so many people that fuck up my name and I just don't tell you, but it uh. happens every day. <laughs> okay. Uh, hey, speaking of fucking up, and then we'll get to uh, the big winners, but my God, Al Pacino, I don't think we'll be invited back to the Academy Awards ever again. You know what? People <laughs> over 75 
should not be handling the envelopes at the Oscars. They should only have nuclear codes. That's right. It. That that's is how that needs exactly. to work. Exactly. That's just the way it should be. Could you put that photo up again? Uh, oh yeah, yeah sure. Yeah. Here we go. Preview of the next in memoriam section. <laughs> oh man. <laughs> oh, no. Yeah, I hope he's more than text on a list somewhere. No. Uh, yeah. I mean, here's the other thing though. I mean, yes, obviously, Steve, you're totally right about the age thing, but also like. Looked like I had a couple of cocktails before Absolutely. I got out there. Oh, yeah. like, I poured myself a big cognac. Yes, <laughs> dude. He chugged some cognac, put on his fucking sketchers, and shuffled out there. He looked lit. Oh, yeah. Is, I'm at, it was an amazing deflation of the entire night. It was incredible. Yep. It was, yeah. I mean, like, you got one job, man. The nominees are, and the Oscar goes to, and you fucked up the first part and skipped it entirely. If I was Chris Nolan, I would have grabbed his hand. Oh, well, thank you so much. Can I just look at that card? I'm just, I need I to be check. sure that I won. Okay, thank, yep, thank you so much. Oh, thanks, Al. Thanks. Love it's a new job for everybody. With you. Exactly. You want to double check on that because you never know. Especially with like the run that poor things had with a bunch of the you know tech oh, yeah. awards and it stuff. Stole like, it. it definitely could holy stole shit. It. Like well, that. I mean, you know what? Though I, I last time I remember it being funny though, and I guess this is why they do it, is because Jack Nicholson saying crash is incredible. And like when no, Jack Nicholson gives, saying Capote, isn't it? No, it's Capote. Capote. <laughs> oh, but the winner it, was the best picture was Crash, and yes. Nicholson did read it. I mean, yeah, yeah, oh, yeah, okay. Yeah. Crash. Oh, okay. Yeah, because he does crash. Because it's the same. It's the same year as Capote, though. I think, and he fucking straight up said Capote on the t on the telecast. <laughs> but so was that year. Um, that's an embarrassing win. Crash, by the way, for best picture. But like he is, he was like focused. Like he he wasn't like yep. like running it. He wasn't mumbling or anything like that. He was like snappy. Right. He was with it, and he's a legend. So you were like, hey, smart idea. End the night with a legend. But yeah. now they're all way too old. They're all like, yes, I, I, yes. I can barely stand up. They're on so many drugs. So here's a question. Uh, <laughs> Who's the next? What's the next legends? Who's who Good would be the next in line? So like uh, people who are now in like what their 50s and 60s, I guess. I right? guess so, yeah. Oh, so, like Denzel's probably going to be that's one true. Of them. Sure. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah. a good he's, one. He's I'd like F. Murray Abraham. He seems still uh spry. Yeah, how old is F. Murray Abraham though? Oh, he's got to be up in there, like the late 60s, yeah, the yeah, early seventies. Yeah, Denzel's um, a good one. Um, Meryl Streep would be great. Obviously, she's like the queen of the world. Holy uh, crow! Do... F. Murray Abraham, eighty-four years old. <laughs> oh wow! <laughs> Get that guy a nuclear code. <laughs> <laughs> he does seem pretty sharp. Um, uh, yeah, you, you know, on the comedy side, yeah, Brad Pitt, Clooney. Someone in the chat says Tom Hanks. That's a good one. Yeah, Tom Hanks. Tom, I, think, I think Hanks has done it. Actually, I'm not. I'm not for incorrect. best picture. Yeah, I think he's just best like, picture. Oh, yeah, I um, believe. Oh, okay. So. And then, you know, if you... Brad Pitt, I guess fucking RDJ eventually. Uh, yeah, yeah. Or oh, Tom yeah, Cruise is you know an institution. Mm -hmm. So oh, yeah, Tom Cruise like famously skips the Oscars though all the time. Like he doesn't mm -hmm. go. That's um, if they want to get him there though. The if they ever had a reason to put the stuntman uh, uh, Oscar in there, yeah, you sure. will get Tom Cruise to come with that shit. You will absolutely yeah. get him for that. Uh, so real quick because we're coming up on the hour here, but just to go through the stuff uh, that won big best animated feature, yes. very cool. Boy in the Hair. Still haven't seen it. Got it. Got to get on it. Great uh, movie. Yeah, it's a fun one, man. Um, mm -hmm. International feature. This was no surprise. Jonathan Glazer took home for Zone of Interest. Uh, with a very powerful speech, um, that was a real interesting moment that I oh yeah did not anticipate happening. So that was very cool. Well, um, he, I mean, it, it was smart because he he didn't say shit about it the entire like the entire award season, so he could get it in right now because yeah. Was, no, he's uh, uh, every he, award he's been. That's oh, right. I knew it was coming mm, because yeah. uh, every award. Oh, is been, that right? He's been saying something. Uh, a, a similar statement, a very similar yeah. statement. Uh, um. Like, yeah, I was. Uh, I will say this: not a dry eye in the house for Davon yeah. Joy Randolph and that uh, whole thing. Giamatti helping her up the stairs. Giamatti crying in the audience at her speech, uh, like, yeah. and her speech was just incredible. What a fucking moment! And like, yeah, as she said, like, she hopes she gets to keep doing this. Don't let it be the curse of like a new person wins a supporting actor thing and then you never see them again. Like, she's great mm. on Only Murders in the Building. She's very. She gets to do comedy on that show. Yeah. She's fucking hysterical. Um, of course, the big man, RDJ. This was uh, no surprise there. 
I like to see so, someone was saying he he ripped the award out of Kihei Kwan's Did, hand. I, okay. I didn't notice that. Oh boy. Okay. What happened, they, Chris Kevin? There's these. There's this. Uh, it, you can watch it when he goes. He doesn't look when he grabs the award. Like he's not uh -huh. looking him in the eye. Can so, we go like, frame by frame? <laughs> people are doing that, Eric. I'm trying to like the manners police came out uh, in yeah, full sure. effect for this thing. I had like, no idea uh, there was even a. Th I didn't even notice. Go ahead, please re recount the evening. So when he got like he's looking, I think at like uh, uh, somewhat the end. I forget who was at the end of the line there. Tim Robert Robbins just, was down there, I think. It's yeah. a, uh, but he dapped up Tim Robbins, which I kind of liked. I was like, 80s Burroughs. I love that. That's pretty cool. Yeah. He's looking at somebody else and takes the Oscar. So he's not looking yeah. him in yeah. the eye. Yeah. So they're like, oh, that's disrespect. That's showing disrespect. And like, they also have images of like Emma Stone doing something similar. It's so nuts that people yeah, I mean, watch just, this dude. shit like this at yeah, all. It's a, unbelievable. Probably, I mean, like, you're just crazy about the moment you know you're shitting like, your fucking know. pants you just yeah. won an oscar yes. stop this folks let you try winning an oscar and hit all the fucking and boxes. then you have to give, give a me speech a like, i have to give a, a best man speech to my brother in about a month and a half i'm gonna uh -huh. shit my pants before but every time i've had to do it I've, I've shit my pants because giving a speech is terrifying even if you're comfortable acting or doing other stuff like mm. i'm not gonna shit my pants on our on our road trip but when I have to do this <laughs> this fucking speech, I'm going to shit my pants. That's going to happen. Uh, it's going to be a very smelly wedding. <laughs> I will say, Steve, for what it's worth, you gave a speech at my wedding. Uh, it was great, dude. You did totally a great job. And my leg and was And it's your brother, who you like better. Yeah. You know. <laughs> mm -hmm. I no, saw the was shaking the entire time. I did. You, your, your you were. Speech. I was there. You were shaking the entire time. I saw the logs roll out your pant legs. <laughs> it, was, it was a wonderful day. Yes, folks. There was someone uh, shitting in public at my wedding. That's. <laughs> but that's I mean, what Eric is revealing. <laughs> giving a speech like that is very difficult, no matter what. And it's sure. not. I mean, the you know whole I mean? Like, thing is your, your brain is what? just everywhere. No, because everybody's become a body language expert. It's their yeah, like it's exactly. hobby oh, wow. now. Is that sure. like I can mind read? Hello. Yeah, the people that never leave their houses <laughs> suddenly know how other people should behave. Yeah, <laughs> smart stuff. Uh, <laughs> uh, Killian. Yeah. Uh, this was great and bittersweet at the same time, yeah, man. It was. I, I'm with you. I I loved it. I, it's he is the stir. He is the straw that stirs that that movie, which is an amazing movie. It's it was my yeah. favorite movie of last year. Second favorite movie was The Holdovers because Paul Paulie G was so great, and I would have liked Paul to win. But what are you gonna do? Killian's amazing. It, it, he yeah. deserve it, it's well deserved. It's way well deserved. I'm a very proud Irishman tonight. He said, "I thought mm. that was very sweet." Um, well, I liked it. He's like, "I want to thank me, uh, me team, uh, Mario Grady, Tommy O'Grady, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Tony O'Grady, other Grady, Tony Grady family, yeah. of course, <laughs> Sinn Fein. We love them." <laughs> Um, so, uh, just real quick. I don't know about this. Emma hey, Stone. I, I called it last soon. week. I called yeah, it. You did it. You did. Yeah. yeah it's I'm not good, surprised. It's a good performance in a movie that I don't, well, I don't like. Uh, I think it's, but yeah. it's, it's a big fucking swing. It I is. think is kind of right. how it got here. Yeah. And it I is, no, I, you're absolutely right. It is a for the fences performance. Absolutely. It's just unfortunate because Lily, I, I, I love Lily Gladstone in killers, which got totally shut out. Yeah. And it's it would have meant something a little bit more for her in a lot of different ways and, and for the Oscars in a lot of different ways. And I mean, like, it is what it is, but it's just sort of like, meh. It's the way yeah. people voted, man. And, you know, you yes, got to respect exactly. it. But I just was like, like, I remember being totally fucking deflated. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, it just it felt like you were you were really hoping to observe a moment. And instead, like, you just saw Emma Stone at the Oscars again. Exactly. Yeah. You know, and Had and she whatever. Four though. She won remember. for La La Land. La La Land? Oh my yeah. gosh. God, really? Yeah, she won yeah, best actress so. for La La Land. So this, That's this is a shocking second. one. Now I'm shocked. <laughs> now. I mean, yeah. I mean, honestly, I I think that Killers is a, or uh, or uh, Poor Things is a better movie and a better oh, yeah. uh, performance. Oh, hundred percent on that one. Even though I don't really care for it, but there you go. Um, and so our man. Yeah, double fisted. Look at this photo. Oh, yeah, just double fisting it, dude. Mm -hmm. That uh, is, oh, it's 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 the last thing he needed. Now he's like this yeah. generation's director. That's it, dude. Done. Yep, get live him. Let him do it. Let him make mm. the Bond movie. He's done yes. it. Let him have his victory yes. lap. This is the one thing sure. he wants to do. Let him do it and shut the fuck up about it. Just, mm. I, I'm tired of this shit. Uh, it, that would be truly incredible. You know what's funny is like he will be. 
uh, speaking of the old timers, like with now we got Spielberg yes, showing up. Yeah. He will be giving awards to people. I yeah. really like, I mean, shit, man, how cool for Chris Nolan. Like, I just received an Academy Award from Spielberg. Like, yeah, fuck. It doesn't get any better than that. Um, yeah, it just, that was, it was great to see. And again, he, this was cool for me because, like, he's always such a whatever kind of uh, stuff. Sure, it's kind of too mean, but, like, he's just a very professional guy. Reserved. Very reserved. Yeah, yeah. And so, English. like, you could tell, he, yeah, you could tell he was just like, so thrilled by this yes. and just so stoked and like you could see that very carefully crafted uh persona kind of cracking a little bit and i thought it was nice and he, he had never his, won before the, 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 yeah he's never won right like that's not mm -hmm. even for screenplay or any of that stuff because he, he no, always kind of got nominated no. for screenplay but he, never. he did do a speech up there because i think he accepted um uh heath ledger's post uh right Post life oh. Oscar, whatever they call I it think, again. <laughs> posthumous. Yeah, I think that was him and the father, I think. Um, and you know, I found out that the Ledger estate never got that Oscar. <laughs> That's kind of weird. <laughs> well, they, um, maybe they'll get it now because he's got so many. <laughs> yeah, really. Oh, look what I found in the garage. <laughs> oh my god, I'm so sick over this whole situation. I saw it, I opened a box and I went, there it is. <laughs> his friends come uh, over and they see it on his son's mantel place. <laughs> you have 61 missed calls from Michelle Williams. <laughs> <laughs> you shut up, bitch! <laughs> <laughs> uh, and then, yeah, of course, it, it, it won the evening as well. It won um, the evening. They did the smart thing of having James Woods not on stage. Yes. I was looking. I was he looking was, very closely. He was at the ceremony. and they he was. was met Yes, go to his Twitter account. You can see he looks he looks like a fucking like a, a rotting clown in a Dude. field now. He oh looks yeah, he's a Harkonnen. Worse. He looks worse than you ever remembered. He looks so bad. Hey, I did that to you, dude. Yes. Yeah, hey, dude. I that. didn't recognize him. I saw the photo this morning, and it was like, here we go. Or so it was like a selfie, and I was like, whose selfie is this on James Woods' Twitter account? Oh, uh oh. Um, uh, but he did yeah. he did get mentioned by the other producer. Yes, um, that other guy. Yes, yeah. the other guy mentioned him. So. So so there Good you go. Not having Nolan have to say it, like be like, <laughs> please, please. That's true. Sure you someone... you can come up here, other guy, but you're the one that yeah. has to thank James Woods. <laughs> please. Exactly. <laughs> uh, but any other stray thoughts here as we wrap up? Uh, the hours uh, well past us here at this point, fellas. But uh, overall, I'll just say uh, there have been worse Academy Award ceremonies. I, I definitely, definitely worse. I, I like actually how it's like. I I also am with Stephen that I missed those montages. Yep. But I was glad that the thing moved, and like I, I, it wasn't, it wasn't that much shorter than the last one, but it was a little bit shorter. And I will yep. thanks for that much. And one big <laughs> win, my man Van Hoytema, been oh, overdue, sure. my man. But like, really, uh, thank God he got it. Like, really, I was really happy to see that. I think he should have gotten it for Nope, but that's another matter. Um. Also, uh, just really quickly very uh, entertaining and powerful uh musical performances mostly all around i really like the billy eilish uh yep. i really liked the song for my people that the indigenous performance there was amazing uh, with the indigenous musicians and ken yeah the ken ken, i mean great. that was just a solid hunk of entertainment with hunks uh, yes but it was just it was fucking funny it was well choreographed well executed just amazing uh yeah that was it Highlight. Did you all uh, uh, scream a little bit when the Flaming Hot Cheetos song came Dude, on? What the fuck are we talking <laughs> about? Yeah, I what tweeted, the is this song from, are we talking about? Is this song from Oppenheimer's? What I was saying. <laughs> that was a I flaming mean, hot one. That was weird. And then it was, I was laughing because it was this performance, Becky G or something. Yeah. Um, yeah. And she's, I guess, according sure, to the she's internet, a sweet gal. Sure, yeah, no, 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 no shade. But like, according to the internet, she's 27 years old. I said to Chelsea, I was like, who's this 12 year old girl singing? And then, like, and then a massive chorus of yeah. tinier children yeah. came up from the floor, yes. and I could not stop laughing. It was very funny. It makes your shit sting. Flaming hot Cheetos. Shit your sting. ass is gonna burn. Flaming hot. Uh, yeah, that was weird. The Oscar nominated. Flaming Hot Cheetos by yeah, a baby. You guys. How yes. about that? Uh, that is going to do it for this week's On Screen Live. Massive week of programming here we want to catch you up on. Uh, if you're still funny enough playing catch up with last week, we mentioned it already on the show, but Roy Scheider in Night Game, uh, one of the uh, uh, listener requested episodes this month we released last week. 
uh, along with a patron requested episode on The Fugitive. Love Just in time for St. Patrick's Day. Just That's in it. <laughs> it's coming yeah. up. Uh, but then uh, uh, Listener Request Month continues this week on the show talking about the reprehensible and decent oh. proposal. Oh, my God. Mm. Uh, oh. And you can uh, you can put this one in your ears ad-free over on the Patreon at the $8 level and up. Uh, but that's not all, gang. The content will flow much like the spice this week. Wednesday, a Rebel Moonmentary uh, commentary track comes out. This one is a lot of fun, talking about the intentionally not good, but the director's cut is also intentionally coming. So don't worry about it, Zack sure. Snyder movie. Yeah, sure. We recorded this a while ago. Unfortunately, we couldn't weigh in at the time on the six. What was? What do you say? 160 million people watch that movie, according to Zack Snyder, <laughs> which is like, come on, pal. Yeah. Come on. You how many of them better than that? <laughs> how many of them watched it? And how many of them had it on in the background? Yes, because it auto played. Like exactly. you know. for three seconds, and that's that's your that's yeah, your yeah. watch. You get to catch yeah. it. It counts. So funny. It's it so funny now. that we're trying to like dupe people with that. Like we, everybody knows how it works now, Zach. That's he was trying to equate it that 160 million people would have bought tickets to yes. see it in the or, theater. Or the Barbie, fucked. eat shit, Barbie, Rebel yeah, Moon, uh huh, part one, <laughs> theatrical cut. Anyway, uh, so yeah, you, yeah. You, can, you can add to that number with the Rebel Moon Mentary, <laughs> where we uh, take the little piss out of it. That, that's, that's fine. Right. We're gonna, yeah, that, we're gonna help Zach. We're taking down Avengers: Infinity War. Finally, we're going to make <laughs> this the most watched movie of all time. We're gonna do it. Uh, one of our most listened to uh, shows of all time, Melro Two One Zero, is also new yes. this week on Thursday. That's right. I heard 160 million people are signed up for <laughs> Patreon at the ten dollar level, the Walsh tier, where Incredible. you get Melro Two One Zero. We are so glad. Uh, Yes, this month we are talking David Silver walking in on Kelly Taylor in the shower. That's picture one. And picture two is Michael Mancini maybe throwing Sydney off a cliff on their honeymoon. Maybe. <laughs> maybe. <laughs> uh, and then check this shit out, y'all. Friday. My mm. God. The amount of shows this week. Friday. We're releasing what's technically like episode zero of our new show, Too Old for This Shit. Uh, this will be on the Patreon without commercials. Uh, and on the free feed with commercials so we can spread the word about Too Old for This Shit, where we are talking the pilot, Steve, is that right, of X-Men 92? It is, yeah, the two-part pilot. Uh, Night of the I, Sentinels? Night of the Sentinels. I'm really excited to revisit it. I watched the first yeah. half last week. I'm going to watch the, probably that again and do the whole thing this week. I'm really excited. Uh, and I'm because all we're geared up for X-Men 97, which is next week, which is so exciting. Yes, That's I cool. already I already watched this and because uh, I didn't watch the show that much growing up. Uh -huh. I knew the intro, mm -hmm. but I really like the, the this two parter that yep. opens this original series. Yeah, man, it's fun. Uh, this is going to be really great. So, yeah, we wanted people to get like a sort of a taste, but also like a way to spread the word about too old for this shit. So Friday. Too old for this shit. Preview episode talking Night of the Sentinels from X Men 1992, the original Fox uh, after school cartoon. Very excited about that. But this was a big week. Thanks for sticking around, y'all. Thanks for tuning in. Uh, we hope you have a great week. And until next time, I have been Andrew Jupin, Steven Sadak, Eric Siska, Chris Cabin. Adios. Bye bye. <laughs>